um, we went to that school even after we moved. Uh, my father moved uh, down to West 55th Street. He was teaching at a Bible Institute at that time. National Bible Institute it was called. It's now I think called Shelton College. They moved out of the Manhattan <clears throat> someplace else. But the um, um, National Bible Institute, we lived right next door. It was in a, in a multi-story building um, um, and we lived right next door in the, the connected set of brown stones. They've since been torn down and, mm. and there's a great big apartment house there now. But, yeah. but uh, um, the, we lived in a brown stone um, that uh, my father was very excited about learning after um, one of the members of the family came up, knocked on the door, and said that she was a, a widow, I think it was, of of one of the Damroshes. Damrosh is a great name in New York music in the early 20th century. Um, Walter, and I forget his brother's name, um, the, they were conductors uh, of orchestras and choruses and built very interesting and very viable and vital uh, musical enterprises in New York City. And they were, he, she was so excited because she used to live there with her husband hmm. in our brownstone and she was so excited to learn that a musician and his family was, was living in their home, yeah. their old home. And it was a typical brownstone with with a lower level basement and you go up to the first floor and I think there are two floors above it. My bedroom was on the top floor in the back overlooking a, a big empty back yard for the whole brownstone set. Mm -hmm. Which I remember because the Hindenburg, when it arrived in Manhattan, flew in a line directly looking out the window like that and I remember watching it go over. Wow. And then only what a, an hour, a few minutes later, it was in flames yeah. in, in New Jersey where wow. it was landing. It's remarkable. What's next? So uh, here's a question for you. Uh, can you talk about the coincidence in which your father met mom's father before you and mom were born? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That question um, relates to the fact that that Cherry, who I married when she was 22 and I was 24, um, when she told her parents, Dr. and Mrs. Turner, H.L. Turner was his name, um, when she told them that she was interested in this young man. We were both at University of Minnesota at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in the early 50s, 53. And uh, uh, her mother wrote back and she said, is this Carpathian that you are interested in at all related to a Caro Carpathian who we knew in New York City and used to direct music at the Gospel Tabernacle where my husband, where your father taught or uh, uh, preached. Hmm. And uh, the answer of course is yes. My father-in-law was actually the president of, became not, he was not at the time we were married, but very shortly thereafter, we, he became the president of the Christian Missionary Alliance. He himself was a missionary and been on the mission field in South America for years. Hmm and continue to be active in the mission field for, for a long, 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 long time. That's the connection you alluded to earlier? That's the connection. That's the connection. That's yeah. <laughs> And so if you think it's a small world, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, who would have ever imagined yeah. you know, that, uh, that your, your, your parents-in-law um, were people that my parents knew when they were young people at the time life was beginning for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose not that far away from, from when Cherry was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at the same time. 
That's mm -hmm. that's what that question really alludes to. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there are lots of coincidences in life like that that are really kind of kind of remarkable. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, how long were were you in? How long were you guys living in New York, and when did you guys uh, leave New York? We lived on Fifty Fifth Street, West Fifty Fifth Street, until. I think it must have been about 1938. Um, we we moved from there to one of the suburbs of New York in Queens, across the East River, mm -hmm. and uh, it was in a suburb called Elmhurst, which is very close to Brooklyn on one side and Jackson Heights, which is another community on Long Island on the other side, and not very far from LaGuardia Field. Yeah. Uh, airfield, as a matter of fact, the um, um, your question was wanting to uh, have which direction? When did um, you? Uh, when did you? Uh, I guess how long were you in New York, and when did you leave? New we York were in New York uh, until nineteen until nineteen forty one. Okay. In nineteen forty one, we had lived in Elmhurst, I think, for the last three years. I believe it was that we were in New York City, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, 1941, my father took a position teaching at a denominational Wesleyan Methodist, which is a branch of the Methodist Church, a Wesleyan Methodist Church um, college in Houghton, New York, which is up in north central New York State, um, about equidistant 70 miles from Buffalo and Rochester, okay. where, which are both on, on the lake, okay. on the Great Lakes. And um, we were there from the fall of 1941, figure this out, mm -hmm. fall of 1941 until the summer of 1945, the exact bracket of World War II. Yeah. We were there in the fall of 41, December 7th, 1941, started Pearl Harbor, yeah. where we were involved, U.S. was involved with World War II, and we left, my father took a different position at Kent State University, in 1945, and we were staying for a few months, few weeks in the summer of 1945 in Rochester, New York, where he was doing a little studying at Eastman School of Music, and um, and uh, <laughs> and um, VJ Day came while we were in Rochester, New York. Wow. VE Day Europe mm -hmm. ended just before we left. Houghton, New York, a, a little town in New York, upstate. So the war years were all spent in Houghton, New York. Mm -hmm. We were in New York City until we went there. What was the impetus for that move? Like what, what made you guys leave New York City? College professors, unless they're in a great, 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 great situation, have a tendency to move to a better one. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father moved from, from, um, from Houghton College. He was never really totally happy there. He did incredible work there. Um, was well known for what he did there, but uh, uh, he he moved on. Mm -hmm. And Kent State University, which is one of Ohio's major universities uh, in the northeastern part of Ohio, uh, just a few miles out, just outside of Akron, just yeah. west of Akron, um, and not that far from Cleveland, about 30 miles from Cleveland. Um, he was there for several years after that, as a matter of fact, improving his situation. Yeah. What was it like living in the different towns? Like, was it hard to leave New York City, or was it... For him or for me? For either, either of you. Well, both. I you? was still growing, okay. so, you know, that, that you, wherever your parents went, you went. Yeah. And uh, so that was no problem. Okay. There was no problem to move on. Not at all. Mm -hmm. um, those were my teenage growing up years, which for m most of us are pretty tough years Yeah, um, in yeah, all sorts been, of ways. You were about just about 16 when you left Houghton, right? We were just, I was just, just 16. Yeah. That's right. Just 16. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then that summer, my father and one of his brothers who had connections in all sorts of, he was a graduate of Harvard. And he had all sorts of connections in, in, in uh, New England and so forth, conspired to send my brother and me 
to a boys' school, a prep school, one of the New England prep schools mm -hmm. in, in Massachusetts. So my father went to Ohio and we were put on a train or I've forgotten even how, I can't even remember how we got there. But my brother and I, at the end of the summer, we went to Mount Hermon School in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. not too far from Springfield in Western Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Then um, we came home at Christmas time, my brother and I, believe it or not, we were so poor, my family was so poor. Um, my brother and I hitchhiked on old US 20, uh, which mm -hmm. now it's, there's an interstate that parallels it, but old US 20 from, from uh, that part of Massachusetts all the way to Ohio wow. and hitchhiked home How for, for Christmas. How long did that take you? A couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> In those days, you could do a lot of hitchhiking, and it was it, it was an accepted thing. Mm -hmm. There was it was easy to do and not at all risky. It was it was it was easy to do all of that. Yeah. Um, a couple other questions. Did uh, especially with this many ones about your father. Um, did he um, did he wear a suit every day? Yes. My father wore a suit every day to the end of his life. <laughs> When he went to the hospital after having his last accident, which took, ultimately took him out, he was wearing a suit and a tie. Yeah. Yes. Did he ever? It was. He never took off his coat or anything like that. Like I'm thinking. I'm thinking that oh no, he was right. able to take his coat off. Okay. He worked. He, he was. He was hard worker at home and did an awful lot of work in his shirt sleeves and yeah. rolled up his sleeves and. He was never like like we do. He he never wore. A pair. I don't think he ever owned a pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. But he had a lot of old slacks, yeah, old suit slacks, yeah, <laughs> and, and old dress shirts, and uh, and so he wore them right to the end of his days. And first pictures that we have, um, always in a suit, a tie, very elegantly dressed. <laughs> is that where you think simply you... but elegantly? Is that what? Is that where you think you got your eye for fashion? Is you like my yeah, eye for fashion? You like uh, you know you, I know you have a pension. When for, I was uh, growing up, I thought ties. that anything that was fashion that I was wearing was because my father wouldn't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound familiar? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, what do you, I guess I should ask? What do you think really drove him to wear suits? Was it just a cultural thing of the times, or was it something that actually about him that made him say I had to wear a suit? Both. I think that, that it was the way he was raised. He was raised old school. Um, he came from an old school autocratic family. I met my grandfather once. Um, he and my, my grandmother came to this country to visit when I was a freshman, I believe it was, at Kent State University. Um, it's possible it was the year when I was a junior, which is two years later. I'm not sure which. Um, he, um, he came and visited, and it was then, mostly in retrospect afterwards, that I realized why my father was the kind of severe, autocratic, old country man that he was. He inherited it. He didn't know anything else. That's the way he grew up. That's the way he and his brothers and his two sisters all grew up. Uh, very, very old school. And I never knew my grandfather, even when he was visiting us and he was, I guess you might say, on vacation. He had a suit and a vest, well-combed, shine shoes, always. And I think that was just part of the heritage of where my father came from. You know, you we all throw off some of our father's ways, but we also keep some of our father's ways, and that was one of the th one of the ways that that my father kept. And uh, so, yeah, that's where he got it. <laughs>